presence today. Why did you come to meet with the Lord? Speak to the Lord. Tell God something. Tell God something. Tell God something. Tell God why you are here today. You know, the woman with the issue of blood needed a miracle. So she went to Jesus and she got what she wanted. So you came to church today. It can't be because it's another Sunday. It can't be because if I don't come to church, they are going to call me and ask me why I didn't come to church. It can't just be a routine. You have to talk to God. I want you to talk to God and tell God why you are here. Do you need help? Do you need help from God? Ask God. Speak to God. Speak to God. Speak to God. Speak to God. Let him know exactly the reason why you are here. Talk to the Lord. Just talk to the Lord. Tell him exactly the purpose of your coming today. Only God can meet you at the point of your need. We can't help you in this place. Only Jesus can help you. So talk to the person you are here to meet. Let him know exactly the reason why you are here. Tell him that desire. Tell him the miracle you need. Tell him the deliverance. Tell him the healing you need. Only him can meet you at the point of your need. Only him can change your life. You know, Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was crossing, was passing by. And he began to scream. That was what he needed. He didn't care what people said about him. He screamed. So get personal. Get personal with the Lord. I need you to speak to the Lord. I need you to speak to the Lord. Let God know exactly the reason why you came to church today. You are not here to meet with a pastor. The pastor can help you. The pastor himself needs a lot of help. So talk to Jesus. Let Jesus know exactly why you are here. Tell him the desires of your heart. Bible says the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. So when you, are ex ex when you are expectant, when you are saying that, Lord, I don't want to leave the church today without you touching me. Lord, then without a doubt, God will touch you. God will change you. God will meet you at the point of your need in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory. We say, blessed be your name, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, these people have come before you. They have come to meet with you. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will meet with them in Jesus' name. Lord, you know the desires of their hearts. You know those things they are looking up unto you for. You know the healing they need, the breakthrough they need, O Lord. Touch them, O Lord. Father, change their lives. Transform them. Break yokes today, Father. Do what only you can do in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I'm asking for help in the mighty name of Jesus that let nobody see me, but let everybody see you. Speak to them, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You know, this month is a month of prosperity for us, and we are trusting God that God will prosper us in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, Bible says that Abraham was blessed in everything. Bible says he was blessed in every area. And we always sing uh, a song, Abraham's blessings are mine. Um, Jesus Christ said, Bible says, Jesus Christ said that if we are in Christ, we are Abraham's, I mean, we are descendants of Abraham because we are in Christ. Hallelujah. So uh, we are trusting God that God will open our eyes, that we will see the mysteries of the kingdom of God, and every single one of us, we will always prosper before God in the mighty name of Jesus. I mean, two Sundays ago, we spoke about the most important prosperity, which is the prosperity of the soul. We spoke about the prosperity of the soul, that the only, I mean, the most important one is for you to be rich towards God. Like, what does it profit a man to gain this whole world and loses his soul? So, the most important prosperity is the prosperity of the soul. God can take any one of us anytime for no reason. God can do whatever he wants to do. Remember the story of the, uh, the rich, uh, rich fool that's, that said to himself that I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to build a bigger barn. I'm going to say to my soul, uh, relax and enjoy. And God says, tonight, your soul is required of you. So let every single one of us always be ready at all times. Let us be ready at all times 
to meet our maker. If God decides that today is going to take you, I, hey, just, be, just know without an iota of doubt that you are going to a better place. You are going to a better place. A place where the streets are made with gold. A place where there are no sorrows. A, a place where you will never find pain. That's where we are going. We all have to be sure of that. So your soul must prosper. That's the most important prosperity. The prosperity of the soul. The Bible says, I wish above all things that you prosper. Be in good health as your soul prospereth. As your soul prospereth. That's the most important prosperity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last week, we spoke about Titan offering. Titan offering is very, 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 very important to God. And we went into details about why you have to pay your tithe. It's 10% of your income. And we went into a free will offering. That nobody should force you to give towards the Lord. You give to God because you love the Lord. I'm telling you... It, uh, a lot of us, we give to members of our family, our children, our spouses, because we love them. The more you love somebody, the more you give to that person. The more you love somebody, the more you will give to the Lord. So if you love, so your love for God, I mean, tell, your giving tells us how much you love God. And Bible says that from the abundance, Bible says that uh, 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 wherever your treasure is, your heart will be. Wherever your treasure is, your heart will be. I'm sure a lot of you, you check your bank account all the time just to see what's going on and so on and so forth because that's your treasure. But when you, when you love somebody dearly, I'm telling you, you will give so much to that person. Bible says, for God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son. God gave the most important thing to him. His only begotten son. Abraham did the same thing when he gave Isaac up. Isaac that he has been looking for all this while because he loved the Lord. He gave Isaac to God. And also, uh, Solomon did the same thing. The Bible says in 1 Kings 3, 3, and Solomon loved the Lord. The next verse now says, next um, a few verses now says, and he gave a thousand burnt offering. So when you love somebody, you give towards the person. So your giving should not be that somebody is forcing you to give. Your giving should not be because of that. Your giving should be because you love the Lord. And God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Today, by the grace of God, we are going to talk about why God blesses. Why God blesses? Why will God bless you? What are the reasons why God will bless us? And we're going to talk about also how God blesses. Why and how God blesses. And as the Lord help us, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that God will open our eyes in Jesus' name. That we will walk in this revelation in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Why God blesses? Why should God bless you? Why should God bless you? Why? First of all, let's establish something. Blessing comes from God. Blessing comes from God. Proverbs 10, 22 says, The blessing of the Lord, it make rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. He adds no sorrow with it. I'm telling you, look, there are some churches today existing in the world, a good percentage of churches are, 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 are satanic churches. There are churches today that exist in the world where they are satanic churches. I'm telling you, and in those churches, you will see some miracles sometimes. But let me tell you this. Now, the Bible tells us that uh, uh, Satan uh, and the demons, they can perform miracles. We have seen it in the Bible, in the Revelation, and so on and so forth. But what happens is that when they take uh, healing from somebody, they're giving it to somebody else. Unlike God. That God heals you completely. There's no sorrow. Right? And when somebody goes to Satan for a child and Satan gives the person the child, just be rest assured that there is something that he's going to get for that child. Be rest assured that it just, it just does not give. That's not just his nature. So, what well, Bible talks about God that when God blesses you, can you imagine you are blessed and there's no but? You are, there's no but. So nobody is saying that he's very, very rich, but he has health issues. 
or he's doing well, but his children are wayward. So Bible says he had the blessing of the Lord. It makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. That is what you want. You want blessing from God. You don't want blessing from man. You want blessing from God. You know, when a man blesses you, a man will vouch concerning what they have said. I say, ah, if not for me, if not for us that helped him, we were the one that helped him to get to where he is. And they will say one thing or the other. And if you now do something they don't like, you are in trouble. But God does not do that. That's why you need blessings from God. The Bible says the blessings of the Lord, it makes rich. And he had no sorrow with it. No sorrow. God gives you, you, you will enjoy it for the rest of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. So it is God that blesses. It is God that blesses. I don't know whether you can remember the story of Balaam and Balak. Balaam and ba Balak. In, in Numbers 23. Let's go to verse 8. Uh, Numbers 23 verse 19. Let's start from verse 19. A popular scripture. Uh, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do? Hath he spoken and shall he not make good? Verse 20 now says, Behold, I have received a commandment to bless. And he hath blessed. And I cannot reverse it. So, this prophet, they gave him, it, it, I, mean, I mean, we know that uh, uh, Balaam uh, is a prophet of God. He was a prophet of God, but he was a very greedy prophet. So, Balak gave him a lot and lot and lot and lot of gifts to curse the Israelites. So, Balaam, uh, Balaam, the prophet of God, took all the gifts and he wanted to curse the Israelites, even though he knew that it wasn't going well. He wanted to curse the Israelites, but as he opens his mouth to curse, blessings come out. As he opens his mouth to curse, blessings come out. So that's why in verse 20 he says, Behold, I have received a commandment to bless. He, it is God that blesses. He has blessed. And nobody can reverse it. Nobody. I pray in the name of Jesus that today receive the irreversible blessings of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. The irreversible blessing of the Lord will be upon your life today in the name of Jesus. You know, the Bible says God opens the door and nobody can shut. When God shuts it, nobody can open it. Forget it. Nobody. The Bible says, if God be for you, who can be against you? Who can be against you? So don't worry about all the enemies, all the, just be on God's side. That's what you should worry yourself about. I want to be on God's side because if God is for you, nobody can be against you. Hallelujah. So that's what the Bible says. So why God blesses? Why will, so we have established that it is God that blesses. It is God that gives you a long lasting blessing. It is God. We have established that. And every single one of us, we want the blessings of the Lord. I've told you these times without number that your, if you have a very fantastic health insurance from your job, God will give you health. Which one do you prefer? The greatest health insurance in the world or health? So health comes from God. That is what God gives. That is the part of the package of blessing of the Lord that make it rich and adds no sorrow. God gives health. So I will go with God any time, any day. I will not give God excuses. I will go with God any time. Let's talk about uh, as, 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 as seven reasons why God bless. Why God will bless you. Seven reasons. Number one, you are blessed. God will bless you to be a blessing to others. God will bless you if he knows that you are going to be a blessing to others. God will bless you if he knows that when he blesses you, it's not just all about your wife, your husband, and your children. That you are going to be a blessing to others. So God is going to use you as a pipe, a channel in which he's going to pass his blessings to other people. When God knows that you are like that, 
you have that type of mindset, God is going to bless you. Genesis 12, 1 to 3 says, Genesis 12, 1 to 3 says, Now the Lord hath said unto Abraham, Get thee out of the country from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless thee and you will be a blessing. So, what happens is that, a, a, I mean, a, a, a pipe cannot be passing water to other places without getting wet. The pipe has to be wet. There's no way you can use a pipe to pass water to something without the pipe getting wet. So, when God is using you to bless other people, uh, he knows that when he gives you something, you are going to be a blessing to other people. Not just your family members. Not just your immediate family or your parents but other people, then God will bless you. God will bless you. And that's what God told Abraham here. He says in verse 2 of Genesis 12, he says, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And thou shalt be a blessing. You shall be a blessing. There are many ways and opportunities in which you can be a blessing to people. People you don't know. That you just be a blessing to them. I mean, some of you, you will, you will come to church, you will know that there are some people that have some needs and God lays it upon your heart. Give it unto them. You have seen a sister that she continuously wears the same shoes all the time. Just be a blessing to that person. Be a blessing to that person. That, that Chanel bag that you have, can you take that bag and give it to somebody? Can you take that back and give it to somebody regardless of how much it costs? Once you can be a blessing, when, once God, God, God knows that he can trust you to be a blessing, God is going to bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number two. Number two number, second reason why God will bless you is to propagate the gospel. Is to propagate the gospel. I mean, money and blessing is needed. Gospel needs money. The Bible says in Zechariah 1.17, Zechariah 1.17, it says, Cry yet, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, My cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad. The Bible says, My cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion, and shall yet choose Jerusalem. My cities through prosperity shall be spread ab abroad. You know what Jesus Christ said? He says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So how can the gospel get to the ends of the world? How? So once God knows that what he gives you, you are going to use it to support the kingdom of God, God will bless you. God will bless you once he knows that. That whatever he gives you, you are going to use it to su support his kingdom. You have to realize that the most important thing to God is for people to make heaven. That's the most important thing. God hates people to go to hell. He hates it with a passion. How do we know? Well, because the Bible says that God is not slack concerning his promises as some people count slackness. Uh, Bible says, but it's long suffering, not wishing that anyone should perish, but all should repent. God does not want anybody to perish. He wants everybody to repent. So instead of God seeing that those people that are committing are, are, are evil, they are killing, they are, they are murdering people, and they are committing uh, 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 immorality, all kinds of stuff. Instead of God to kill them, he gives them a long rope. Because he, does, he knows if they die, they will go to hell. So God is, I mean, giving them a long road because he wants them to repent. He wants their life to change. And that is why uh, uh, we know that God does not want anybody to perish. But God now wants people to hear the gospel. But how are they going to hear the gospel? It takes money to preach the gospel. It takes money to do a whole lot of things. It takes money for us to be in this church. 
It takes money for us to be in this church. It takes money for us to pay the mortgage of this place, to put the lights on, and so on and so forth. And everything, it, everything requires money. So when God knows that you are going to support the gospel, God is going to bless you. Why God blesses? Why God blesses? Look at Haggai. Look at Haggai 1.4. Haggai 1.4. Haggai 1.4. The Bible says, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? And this house lies waste. Talking of the house of God lies waste. But everybody is doing their own thing. They are dwelling in their sealed houses. But the house of God lies waste. He now says, Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with water. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. He and he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into bags of holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, said the Lord. You look for much and lo, it came to little. When you brought it home, I blow upon it. Why? Say the Lord of hosts, because my house, that is waste. And you run every man unto his own house. My house is waste. My own house lies in waste. But everybody, you run to your own house. But my house lies in waste. Therefore, the heavens over you is stayed from dew. And the earth is stayed from our fruits. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountain, and upon the corns, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hand. Why? Because my house lies waste. Why God blesses? For the kingdom of God. To propagate the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the reason, one of the reasons why God blesses. To propagate the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to understand that these are the things that are important to God. Everybody, you must be kingdom conscious. You must be kingdom conscious. You must be God conscious. I'm telling you, you, must, you have to be so conscious about the kingdom of God and what God says seriously. <laughs> Look, uh, David, God told David, uh, uh, God, David, David loved the Lord. We know David. Bible calls David a man after God's own heart. So David said, I'm going to build a house for the Lord my God. I'm going to build a house for God. And God said, uh-uh, you're not going to build a house for me. Because you have shed too much blood. So God said, you know what? Solomon, your son, will build this house for me, but not you. Bible says, that David, out of all of his might, Bible says, Bible says, because of the affection I have for the house of the Lord my God, I have provided out of the things with gold and silver and this and that. David provided so much for the house that for the Lord, in which when the house starts, when they start building the house, he would have been dead. He won't be alive. To be able to take the glory for the house that has been built. He won't be alive. But because he has affection for the Lord. He gave everything towards that house. Hallelujah. 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 So why will God bless you? For the gospel. To propagate the gospel. Everybody, there are missionaries all over the place. Missionaries. They are going to places that we cannot go. If I ask you to go to China. To go and do mission work or to go to some harsh areas. You say, no, 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 I can't go there. But your money can go. Your money can go. You can send your money there. To help those people that are volunteering themselves to go. So that the gospel can be preached. Jesus Christ said, I, I read it again. Matthew 24, 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Jesus said, Until the gospel reaches all, the end of the world, the end will not come. So how will that happen? How will that happen? 
by us sending missionaries, by us sending people out there to go and preach the gospel. But how? My cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad. Shall be spread abroad. Praise the Lord. Number three. Number three. Number three, number three, number three. Number one is what? God blesses you for what reason? Why will God bless you? Number one, so that you will be a blessing to others. Number two, why will God bless you to propagate the gospel? To propagate the gospel. Anybody that is, has made up his mind that he will support the gospel of Jesus, God will bless that person. Number three, God bless those he can trust. God will bless you if he can trust you. If God cannot trust you, he will not bless you uh, like that. Uh, praise the Lord. Luke 16, 10. Luke 16, 10. Bible says, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. He that is faithful in little is faithful in much. And he that is unjust in least is also unjust in much. But, uh, verse 11 says, If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Who will commit to your trust? Who will trust you with true riches? So God blesses those he can trust. God blesses those he can trust. If God cannot trust you, some of you, I mean, if God blesses you so much, you will not have time for church at all anymore. You will always have an excuse. I have a very, very important meeting. Some people are coming from out of the country. I cannot, I cannot uh, be uh, uh, in church because they are coming from out of the country. I mean, who can be more important than God? Who can be more important than God? We will all have excuses, big excuses. Forgetting that it is the Lord that gave us the blessing. Forgetting that. That it is God that gave us the blessing. So, uh, and people always say that, oh Lord, just bless me. If you bless me, I will pay my tithe. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You can't say God bless me and I will pay my tithe. Because God has already blessed you with little. But without little you have, you have not paid your tithe. Now imagine when God now gives you a million and you say you are going to give to God 100,000. Bible says you will not do it. That's what the Bible says. You won't do it. Why? Because that's where you will say that, ah, I, I, I can't give the pastor that money. How can I give pastor 100,000? There's no way. You will not even think about God. You will think you are giving the money to the pastor. Hallelujah. So God says, he that is unfaithful with little cannot be faithful with much. So, if you are faithful, if God gives you $10 and, and you bring that $1 to the church, you remember, tithe is not about how much. God does not care about how much. It's about faithfulness. It's about faithfulness. So, if you bring that $1 to church, that God gave me $10, I'm giving that $1 back to God. Now, Lord, here is my tithe. And God looks at you and says, okay, I will give you $100. And you bring $10 back to God. And he says, God, here is my tithe. And and so on and so forth. And that's the way scripturally, scripturally it works. Remember the story, uh, remember the story in, in Luke 19. Luke 19, that God gave uh, somebody one, uh, one talent, another one person two, another person five. And the one that God gave five went, came back, made another five. The one he gave two went, came back, made another two. But the one he gave one, the Bible says he hid it. And when Jesus came, look at what Jesus Christ said in Luke 19, 24, 26. He says, and he said unto them that stood by, now take from him the pound and give it to him that had ten pounds. So the one that had one, they took the pound from him. They gave him to the one that had what? Ten pounds. And verse 25 says, And they said unto him, Lord, he had ten pounds. And verse 26 says, For I say unto you, that unto everyone which hath shall be given. Everyone that is faithful, God gives more. That's why I always tell people that God uses busy people. God uses busy people. So don't think that is when you will have time. My, my schedule will work out, then I'll be able to serve God. God uses busy people. Hallelujah. 
Let's look at 2 Corinthians 9, 6. It says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. God is telling you kingdom principle that if you trust me with little, if you trust me with little, I will give you little. If you trust me with big, I will give you big. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. So, God is saying what we trust him with is what he's going to give to us. So, can God trust you? Can, out of that which God has given unto you, how much of it can you give to God? And when I say give to God, don't just think about you, you, giving you a tithe and offering. It could be that God is telling you, laying demand on something that belongs to you, telling you, go and give it to that person, or go and give it to this person, and so on and so forth. So, can you give it to God? That's the question. Remember the story of the woman, uh, 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 Elijah, and the widow in 1 Kings 17. In 1 Kings 17, God blesses those he can trust. So, let's, let's start from verse 10. So, he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks. God told Eli Elijah to go to a widow. I mean, that's, that sounds funny because a widow is not supposed to have anything. But God can use anything to provide for you. So, God told Elijah to go to the widow. Now, verse 10. So, he rose and went to the Zarephath. And he, when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering, of stick, gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray, the, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Remember, there was famine during this time. There was famine during this time. Verse 11, and as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in, in a course, in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. That was their last meal. There was serious, terrible famine. And this was their last meal. So God wanted to bless this widow. And God now sent his prophet Elijah to this widow. So God did not show up to the widow and, and begin to pour out blessing. God told the widow, look at what the prophet told the widow, give me what you have. And the widow said, this is my last meal. I just want to eat this last meal and die. And Elisha said unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first. First, God first. So you have little, give it unto God, and God will increase it. I saw a picture, I mean, a picture of uh, God having a very big teddy bear in his hand at the back, like this. At the back, like this. And God was asking the little girl, a little girl, that has a tiny teddy bear, that give me your teddy bear. So God wanted to give the little girl, take the tiny teddy bear and give the little girl the big one. But the little girl cannot see the big one be behind. Cannot see the big one behind. That is what God does. That is what God does. Here, verse 14 says, For thus says the Lord God, of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah and she and he, and her house did eat many. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke to Elijah. Look at what happened. Give me your last meal. Sometimes God is going to ask you such things. But just know, 
So far you know it's God. Just know that God will not leave you hanging. Amen. He will not leave you hanging. Amen. He will bless you in that area. Let me, let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. An elephant eats 140 uh, 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 thousands of straws every day and discharges 100. Poops 100 out. So, what does that mean? So, an elephant cannot say, I, I, I don't want to discharge. I want to hold on to the 140 I'm eating. What's going to happen? It's going to die. It's going to die. But, but a cat eats point something, uh, point zero zero something of straw and discharges even smaller. An elephant cannot discharge like a cat. It's going to die. The more God blesses you, the more God expects you to release. The more he expects you to release. That's why God blesses. God has to be able to trust you. Trust you in what way? Give me what you have. Give me what you have. Then God will give you more. He has to be able to trust you. Number four, God will bless you because of his covenant. God will bless you because of his covenant. Bible says in Deuteronomy 8, 17, it says, And thou say in thy heart, My power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. Sometimes we think that we are so good at what we do that, ah, we are one of the smartest. And I always tell God, I mean, by the grace of God, I'm, I, I'm, by the grace of God, I'm very good at what I do. But I always tell God that the best of the best of the best of the best have been jobless. The best of the best of the best have been jobless. I'm telling you. So, so when you are doing so well, don't think that it is because of your wisdom, knowledge, understanding that, that all of these things. Bible says here, and thou shalt say in thy heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. That's what that rich fool said. The rich fool said, Bible, Bible says, the, the land of a man, I mean, brought forth plentiful. It's not him. It's the land that brought forth plentiful. It's not him. It's not him. The Bible says it's the land of the man that brought forth plentiful. And he said within himself that I will do this, I will do that. Now, let me show you something we already read earlier. And this is in Haggai that we read earlier. He says, in fact, Haggai, Haggai 1, 11, he says, And I called for a drought upon the land. So God can make the land have drought and not bring forth plentiful. So it is God. So wherever you find yourself, whatever it is, it is God. That's why we don't complain about anything. We don't murmur about anything. We don't grumble. No matter how bad the situation is, we give thanks to God. Because some people are praying to be in that terrible situation you are complaining about. That's all some people want. So whatever you find yourself, no complaint. Just go before God and give God thanks for every situation, for every circumstance, for everything. You give God thanks. Next month, by the grace of God, is, is a month of praise. You give God thanks for everything. We praise God, we appreciate God, and we give God the glory. Verse 18 of Deuteronomy 8 now says, but thou shalt remember. So every time, God is saying, don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Say, thou shalt remember. Remember that it is the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant. Why would he bless you? To establish his covenant. Which is swear unto the father, thy father as it is this day. God will bless you because of the covenant that God had with Abraham. That's why God will bless you. So God will bless you because of that covenant. And God is a covenant-keeping God. So it says here, and it shall be if thou shalt, if, if thou shalt do all that, all, if thou shalt do all, forget the Lord thy God. God forbid, that will not be our portion. So don't, don't let me read that. You won't forget God, Amen. but you will remember. Amen. 
that it is God that gave you the power to get well, to establish his covenant which he has sworn to Abraham. Let's see that covenant that God swore to Abraham. Genesis 22, 17. Genesis 22, 17. The Bible says, and, and said, by myself I have sworn. God, this is God. Why did God swear? God told Abraham, Abraham, give me your child, Isaac. Go and kill him. And Abraham did exactly what God said. So this is what God is saying now. And said, by myself, I have sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless you, and in multiplying I will multiply you, thy seed has the star of the heaven. This is the covenant that we are talking about, that God uh, made a covenant with Abraham. As the star of the heaven, and as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of thy enemy. And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. In thy seed, all nations of the earth will be blessed. Thy seed. We are the seed of Abraham because we are in Christ. We are the seed of Abraham. So Bible says we shall be blessed. So because of this covenant that God had with Abraham several years ago, that is why we, God is going to bless us. Because thou hast, now, this is the most important part of this uh, uh, covenant. And I'm, I'm going to read, it says, Be, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Obedience. Anybody that dares to obey God, I'm telling you, God will bless that person. Look at Deuteronomy 28. This is a covenant. Covenant means that there are two people in a covenant, usually two people in a covenant or two or more people. And what happens is that uh, uh, each party has their own part. So I will say this is my part of the covenant and you will say this is my part of the covenant. So that is what a covenant is. And both of them must do their own part for it to really work. So Deuteronomy 28, 1 says... I can't read all of this. It's 1 to 15. I can't read all of this. But he says, this anonymous 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 says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Amen. So, God says that if you will do this, remember why God said he will bless Abraham. It says here in verse 18 of Genesis 22, it says, And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Why? Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Why? Because you obeyed my voice. So God said, I will bless Abraham because he obeyed my voice. What did God tell him? Kill Isaac. So Abraham said, I will do it. So God said, I will bless you because you obeyed me. Now, in Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord, and observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. But you have to hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord, and do all of his commandments. Every single commandment. You have to do it. Every single thing that God says, you have to do it. God has helped us in our marriage. But I tell you this, that my marriage is based on the word of God. It's based on the word of God. So it doesn't matter what my wife does or what, he does, or what she doesn't do. God says, husband, love your wife as Christ loves the church. So that is a commandment. She is not husband. I am a husband. God told me that. That's not what God told her. God told me, husband, love your wife as Christ loves the church. God does not say, if she is nice, if she cooks well, if she is beautiful, God has no condition for her concerning what he told me. God has told her her own. He has told me my own. And I have to diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord regardless of what she does. Hallelujah. Regardless of what she does. That's my commandment. God says pay your tithe. O obey his commandment. God says give your offering. Obey his commandment. God says raise godly children. Do as God has said. Hallelujah. Whatever God says in his word, just do it. Now, Bible now says here that I, verse 2, and all these blessings shall come unto thee. Uh, all these blessings shall overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice 
of the Lord thy God. So you do what God says regardless of the situation. All you need to know is that God, is this what you are saying? And you can con confirm it with the word of God, do it. Do as he has said. And the blessings goes on and on. Blessed shall that be in this city. Blessed, verse 4. Blessed shall the fruit of the body, verse 5. Blessed shall the basket, verse 6. It goes on, 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 until verse 14. Now, some people think that I don't want to do what God says. That I don't want God to leave me alone. Devil, you to leave me alone. I'll just stand in the middle. But look at verse 15 now says, But it shall come to pass if thou shalt not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all of his commandments and the statutes which I command this day, that all these causes shall come upon thee and overtake thee. But that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. So God has told you, do it, you get this. Don't do it, this is what you get. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number five reason why we have to seek God. Number five reason. So number four is because of his covenant. Number five, why we have to seek God is why we have to, uh, why, uh, why God blesses is God, bless, uh, 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 God blesses those that seek him first. Those that seek him first. Those that put God first. Of course, we know uh, Matthew 6. Matthew 6, 31. Bible says, Therefore, take note for saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Whither shall we clothe? For all these things do the Gentiles seek after. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God says that you just focus on me, I will take care of you. And when God says seek me first, it doesn't mean leave your job and uh, leave your responsibility to your children or your spouse and so on and so forth. That's not what it means. But what it means is that you have to take God as priority over every Everything. Bible says that whosoever will not hate, that's the word the Bible uses, hate his father, mother, wife, brother, sister, uh, 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 siblings, and so on and so forth, and even himself, cannot be my disciple. Cannot be my disciple. So what that means is that it, it, it doesn't literally mean hatred of those people. It means that when it compares you and all of your family and God, your love for God should seem as if you hate them. You, because you love God so much. So you have to seek God first. God says, I will take care of you. I got you. I will take care of you. You just focus on me. You just spend time on me. I will give you the blessings that you require. For your heavenly father knows that you have need of those things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Don't give excuse to God why you can't do something for God. Put God first. You can't put God first and God puts you last. If you make God first, God will make you first. So when you focus on God like that, that is exactly what the Lord will do. So very, very important. Number six. Number six. Why God blesses. Number six. God blesses those that bless the poor. God blesses those that bless the poor. God blesses those that bless the poor. Uh, Proverbs 28, 27 says, He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. But he that hideth his eyes shall have many a cause. Proverbs 19, 17. Proverbs 19, 17 says, He that had pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. How many people want to lend unto the Lord? Hallelujah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine you are lending unto the Lord? But let's look at how he finished uh, at the end of that. Uh, and that which he had given, will he pay him again? You can't lend unto the Lord and say that, uh, and God says, ah, sorry, I don't have it right now. <laughs> that I'll give you later. So it says, he that had pity on the poor lended unto the Lord, and he and that which he had given on will he pay him again. Proverbs 19 says, He that hath bountiful eyes shall be blessed. He that hath bountiful eyes shall be blessed. For he, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. He giveth of his bread to the poor. He that has bountiful eyes shall be blessed. 
Proverbs 29, uh, 11 to 12 says, when the, e when the ear heard me, then it blessed me. When the eye saw me, it gave me witness. Why was I blessed? Verse 12 says, because I delivered the poor that cried. And the fatherless and him that had none to help him. You are a blessing to people. You are a blessing. That's why we are saying about this coat drive. You are in the comfort of your house. Some people are under the bridge. Some people are outside. They are using cardboard to keep themselves warm. So there is a place whereby they usually give out to those people. And that's what we do. So just go and buy coats. Sacrifice. How much is it going to cost you? Go to Bollington Coat Factory. Buy one that of your size, your wife's size, your children's size. That God, thank you that we have shelter. We have roof on top of our head. We have food on our table. We have food on our table. Some people are going to be freezing this winter without an iota of doubt. But we can alleviate that. We can help with that. We can help with that. Then buy cans of food. You eat all the time. Just say, okay, I'm going to go to the grocery. I'm going to spend $50. I'm going to buy all kinds of cans of food and stuff like that. I'll bring it to the church and I'm going to give it uh, so that I can give it to those that need it. And $50 is nothing for you. Nothing for you. Be a blessing to the poor. And a lot of you will like this final one. A lot of you will like this last one. God blesses you to make you enjoy his glory on earth. To make you enjoy his glory on earth. Bible says here in 1 Timothy 6, 17, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches. See? Let me read this again. This is very, very important. Charge them. 1 Timothy 6, 17. 1 Timothy 6, 17. 1 Timothy 6, 17. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, and trust in uncertain riches. Don't trust in uncertain riches. Don't trust what you have. Don't trust the money in your bank account. <laughs> Don't trust any of that. Okay, we should not trust it. Okay, no problem. Who should we trust? Look, it says, But in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Put your trust in God. He's going to give you richly all things. Not some things, not most things. All things to enjoy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look at Isaiah 65, 21 to 24. You know, that Haggai, right? The, the Haggai one that we read earlier, that the Haggai one, let me quickly go there just to remind you of the Haggai one that we read earlier that, uh, that will not be our portion. The one that says that, uh, now therefore, thus says the Lord, consider your ways. You have sown much and you bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough to drink. And that one that we read. Now, look at the, uh, look at the, that's for those people that don't consider God. But look at, for us, that we love God. Look at, it's in Isaiah 65, verse 21. It says, and they, and they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyard and eat of the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. As for the days of the tree are the days of my people. And my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hand. Hallelujah. All your hard work God is saying, I'm going to bless you. You are going to enjoy it. The houses you build, you will inhabit it. He says, your vineyard that you plant, you will eat of the fruit thereof. He says, you will not build and another inhabit. He says, you will not plant and another eat. As for the days of the tree of my people and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hand. They shall not labor in vain. Nor bring forth trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord. 
and their offspring will with them. So it, not only you, even your children. And it says here, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Hallelujah. Can you imagine? That before you call, God has already answered. God saw your heart. What's in your heart? And before you, God has answered. I'm telling you. He says, while you are yet still speaking, now, Lord, uh, I please, uh, here, here is this. You just had a knock on the door. Oh, I was told to come and give you this. Hallelujah. My elect shall long enjoy the work of their hand. So God blesses us for us to be able to enjoy the work of our hands. Let's talk to God. The Lord help us to fulfill all of these conditions. Give us the grace. Help us, O oh God. We can't do it ourselves. We are asking for your help and your grace, O oh God. Why God blesses, O oh Lord, help us. We want you to bless us. We need your blessing that make it rich and hearts no sorrow. We don't want a man's blessing. Our jobs cannot bless us. You are the only one that can bless us, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are asking, O oh God, for your blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, bless us. In the mighty name of Jesus. O oh Lord, we are asking that you will bless us. Father, your blessings that make it rich and has no sorrow. Your irreversible blessing. Help us to fulfill all these conditions that will make you bless us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever we are doing that is making you bless us, help us never to stop doing them. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Whatever we are not doing that is preventing your blessings from coming to us, help us to begin to do them in the name of Jesus. We are asking of you, Father, help us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want the blessing that comes from you, not the one that comes from a man. We are asking, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We are asking in the name of Jesus. Brethren, we are going to take a few prayer points. Now, you know, th that is why God blesses. Right, right. But how will God, how? Uh, the, the seven reasons we give is why. Is the reason why God will bless. Now we are going to take some prayer points on, on how. How will God bless you? I'm telling you, God will not rain down money from heaven. Neither would that be a bank error in your favor. <laughs> so God will not do it that way. How we go, we're going to take this prayer point. The first one is divine direction. A divine direction. God will give you direction concerning what to do. Ask God for direction. Ask God, the Lord, direct me in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I'm asking for direction, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God will give us divine direction. Show me what to do. Show me what to do. Show me which business to get myself involved in. In the name of Jesus, I'm asking of you, Father, direction, oh God. Guide me and lead me, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I'm asking for divine direction, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, direct me, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Bible says, I am the Lord thy God that teacheth thee to profit, that leadeth thee in the way that you should follow. It leads you in the way that you should follow. So God directs you. Ask God, the Lord direct me. Lord guide me. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Direct me and guide me, O oh God, in the precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Number two, how will God bless you? Divine ideas. God will give you divine ideas. Ideas that nobody knows about. Or ideas that people have tried but did not work. God will just tell you what to do for you to explode. Ask God for divine ideas, Lord. Divine ideas, Lord. Divine ideas in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm asking for divine ideas, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open my eyes to see what others don't see. Open my eyes, oh Lord. Give me insight 
on what I need to do, oh God. I'm praying for a divine idea in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me divine idea. Give me insight, oh God. Father, I'm asking of you, oh God, for divine idea in the name of Jesus, oh God. Help me, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Second Chronicles 26. Verse 14 says, And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shield, and spears, and helmet, and, and habergon, and bows, and siblings, and cast stone. And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the tower and upon the bulwark to shoot arrows and great stone with them. And his name spread abroad. His name spread abroad. His name spread abroad. For he was marvelously helped till he was strong. He made in Jerusalem. He made. God gave him a divine idea. What nobody had done. But his name spread ab abroad. Lord, give us divine ideas. Give us insight, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Give divine insight, divine idea. Show us the know-how of this business. Of our business so that we can explode. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we are asking of you, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Divine idea, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. And in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And number three. Last but not the least, divine favor. Divine favor. The Lord, favor me. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Favor means that there are five of people that do the same type of thing you do. But they come to you. They come to you not because you are the best. But because you are favored. Bible says, Bible says Esther was favored. Esther was favored even though she was a foreigner. She was favored. The king preferred her to all other virgins. Divine favor. Ask God the Lord favor me. Favor my business. Favor me, oh God, in the name of Jesus. That people will come to you instead of other people. Ah, the time to favor Zion has come. Yea, the set time is at hand. Lord, favor me, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm asking that you will favor me, oh God, in the precious name of Jesus. Favor me, oh God. I'm asking for your favor, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Divine direction, divine idea, divine favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you will favor me. You will favor me, oh God. Favor my business. Bless the work of my hand in the name of Jesus. I'm asking for your favor. Unleash it upon me in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, bless me, oh God. Ah, as Jabez prayed, pray to the Lord that you will bless me, oh Lord. You will bless me, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, bless me, O oh Lord. Your blessing that make it rich. Ah, Father, I pray for divine favor. Ask the Lord. Brethren, talk to the Lord. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will bless you. God will give you divine favor. God will give you divine idea. God will give you divine idea, divine direction. He will tell you where not to do it and where to do it. In the name of Jesus, Ah, divine favor, divine idea, divine blessing in the name of Jesus. Bless the work of my hand. Bless the work of my hand in the name of Jesus. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Some of you, before this year runs out, you will know exactly what to do. You have been confused all year long. But because of today, God will reveal unto you what to do. God will give you divine insight, divine idea, and he will favor you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Take heed of those seven uh, uh, reasons why God blesses. Why God blesses. You have to take them very, very serious. Why God blesses. Father, we are grateful. We are thankful. We need your blessings. The one that comes from above. The one that comes from you, Lord. 
Lord bless us bless this ministry bless your people oh God every single one of them touch them in the mighty name of Jesus touch them father in this month of prosperity that nobody will know any lack in the name of Jesus and every single person will know what to do Lord Bible says the path of a righteous man is like a shining light that shined brighter and brighter even unto a perfect day Lord we ask oh God for your blessings over our lives in Jesus mighty name we we'll pray in Jesus mighty name we we'll pray hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord it's offering time you know you have to give to the Lord not, not because of any other thing but because you love the Lord give to God because you love God I challenge you make up your mind that you will never give five dollars especially when you are blessed if that's all you have that's fine if that's a, if that's the blessings of the lord upon your life that's fine but if god has blessed you have a target and a goal the lord i will always give hundred dollars every sunday as offering god i will always give five hundred dollars every day every sunday as offering you will be shocked I know what I'm saying because I've done it for years. My wife and myself, we've done it for years. I'm telling you. And the Bible says all the tithes belong to the Lord. All the tithes belong to the Lord. So make sure you pay your tithe. Tithe will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Tithe will open the windows of heaven. Tithe opens the windows of heaven. Rebukes the devourer. But offering determines how much comes down. How much you get is dependent on your offering. Tithe will open the windows of heaven. Bible says, I, they have received a commandment to collect tithe from the people. Scriptures. Bible says that don't he that swears spirally shall reap spirally that swears bountifully shall reap bountifully. Every man has a purpose in his hand. So make up your mind. Nobody is forcing you. Every man has a purpose in his heart. So let him give. Not of necessity. So you can decide that you're not going to give anything. That's fine. Not grudgingly. So we are not forcing you to give. So don't frown your face. Be excited. For God loves a cheerful giver. Look, see, I don't give because of that part. What I just read to you in 2 Corinthians 9 6, it says, He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly, he that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. <laughs> Every man has a purpose in his heart, so let him give. Not of necessity, not grudgingly, for God loves a cheerful giver. That's not the part that me I like. The part I like is what comes after. He says, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, having all sufficiency in all things, and always abounding towards every good work. That's the part I like. So when I heard that, I said, what must I do to have all grace abound towards me, to have all sufficiency in all things, and always abounding towards every good work? So God says, go back. That's when he that swears sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that swears bountifully shall reap bountifully. The result is what I like. So I need this result. What do I need? To be able to get this result, go back. God is able to make all grace. I need grace in every area of my life. 
abound towards you having all sufficiency not most all sufficiency in all things and always abounding towards every good work this is the reason why we do what we do we do it according to the bible so give to the lord give joyfully and be very very excited hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah can we be on our feet as we give god our offering Hallelujah.